Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to the press, press conference of the Foreign Affairs Council on Trade. And here on the podium, Finnish Minister for Development, Development Cooperation and Foreign Trade, Mr. Viljas Kinnari, and uh, Commissioner for Trade, uh, Madam Cecilia Malmström. And uh, I give the floor to Minister, please. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the EU Trade Ministers gathered today under the Finnish Presidency to exchange views on pressing trade policy issues. The topics included the WTO reform and the preparations for the 12th Ministerial Conference, trade relations with the US and the implementation of the trade agreements. During the lunch, we also had an informal discussion on our trade and investment relations with China. Commissioner Malmström briefed us also on ongoing EU trade agreement negotiations. We had a good discussion amongst ministers today, and I would like to thank Commissioner Malmström for setting up the scene for us. We also discussed the critical situation at the WTO. The rules-based system is in grave danger and world trade is facing uncertainty. In exactly three weeks from now, the WTO dispute settlement is at crossroads as the appellate body ceases to function. As the European Union, we are united in our determination to defend and strengthen the multilateral trading system and to do everything necessary to uphold the WTO's two-step independent dispute settlement. We will work towards the 12th WTO ministerial conference in Nur Sultan in Kazakhstan and beyond to that end. We expect equal commitment from every WTO member. As far as the um, transatlantic, tra transatlantic relations, we had a comprehensive discussion on EU-US trade relations, our most important trade and investment relation. We are determined to pursue a positive trade agenda with the US, where we see great opportunities. The key is to decrease tensions and work together. We also discussed the implementation of trade agreements, which has been a priority for the Finnish EU presidency. We should ensure that the benefits of the agreements are fully utilized by the companies, especially small and middle-sized enterprises, the SMEs. These discussions will continue in Trade Policy Committee. During the lunch, as said, we had a good informal exchange of views on our trade and investment relations with China. As said, once again, I would like to thank Mrs. Cecilia Malmström for her friendship, openness, excellent cooperation with member states and her dedication in delivering outstanding results in the, in the area of EU's trade agenda. I wish you all the best for the future and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much. Commissioner Maastrom, please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Minister. Uh, this was the second time I said goodbye to the trade ministers. Uh, this time, I think it's for real. So this was most likely my last uh, trade council. And, and that is, of course, was very special. It's been five fantastic, dramatic and challenging years. And many things we discussed today have been on the agenda for many years as well. As the minister said, we start to talk about uh, the WTO, the upcoming ministerial conference, what is possible, realistic, achievable, to, to, um, to achieve by then uh, the jo joint European strategy and, of course, the most, uh, um, the, the most acute issue, the appellate body, where the European Union will continue to push 
the process in Geneva, but also in relations with other countries and with the US to see if it is possible to find a solution by December, and if not, pursuing our, our interim agreements to preserve our rights in WTO disputes and try to find a long-term solution. And we will also continue to see how we can reform, strengthen and modernize the WTO in all its form, because the crisis in WTO is, of course, much bigger than only the, the appellate uh, body. Uh, as the minister said, we discussed the EU-US trade relationship, trying to see where the areas where we can maintain a positive and balanced agenda. The good news is that the US did not announce any new tariffs on EU car and car parts on the November 13 deadline, setting their investigation. So this means that both sides continue to respect the agreement done by Presidents Juncker and Trump of last July, where we said as long as we have this positive agenda, we would not impose any new tariffs. Of course, the threat is not entirely gone, uh, and we are mindful of, of that. We discussed the um, Airbus Boeing issue. The EU has, we are disappointed by the US uh, imposition of tariffs. Uh, we will have the possibility to impose Boeing tariffs next year, once authorized by the WTO. But we uh, would prefer, and we have made this very clear to the US, to say that we should find a solution to future and existing uh, subsidies on civil aircraft and also see if we can find some joint global standards because they are the countries who are massively subsidizing their, their industry. And on a positive note, we are on track to implement the agreement with the US on the uh, specific chair of hormone-free beef quota. We hope the European Parliament will vote yes to this next week and the Council will then endorse it beginning of, of, of December. We have sent to the US our proposal for a text on an agreement on conformity assessment and we are also uh, working on some, uh, some standards and we are waiting uh, for a response to the US uh, on this. We are happy to, uh, to note that the EU-Singapore agreement enters into force today. This is good news for EU and Singapore, but also for the whole region, because this is an important stepping stone uh, for us, and Singapore is also an important ally when it comes, for instance, in the reforms of WTO and the, the, um, the modernization of the, the, the international uh, framework. As the minister said, we discussed EU-China relations in a broad uh, sense. I was happy to see that my successor and friend and colleague Phil Hogan uh, signed and agreed finally uh, in Beijing last week on the protection of geographical indications, meaning that 100 traditional EU delicacies will be protected from imitation in China and we will give the same protect protection for 100 Chinese products. This is important for many of our member countries and their uh, economy. And we will continue our discussions and negotiations in our investment negotiations uh, with China. We are partners in some areas, but we're also competitors. So we need to deepen the EU engagement with China while defending our interests. And this is certainly a discussion that will come back um, during the, the, the next uh, commission uh, as well. And finally, I presented, as I did yesterday, the Eurobarometer survey, where we can see that actually a majority of EU citizens 60% think that they benefit from international trade. This is a race with 16 percentage points from 2010. And 70% say that EU is stronger together when they negotiate trade, the member states, uh, on their own. And 80% agree that we need strong international trade rules. This is a very interesting Eurobarometer. I will invite you to look at the details there. So it was a very um, intense and interesting and important council today, thanking the, um, the Finnish presidency for the way you led this and the way you're leading the, the presidency overall. Um, and, and of course, uh, looking, um, wishing you all the good things for the remaining five weeks or six. Thank you very much. Before going, before going to questions, uh, just to remind that uh, we have a wide range of, of interpretation here, including Finnish and Swedish. So let's take, uh, First question back there. Please Thank use my and uh, mention your media and your name. Thank you very much, Jerome Hughes for Press TV. <clears throat> Commissioner Malmstrom, can I ask you briefly, um, uh, in relation to US-EU trade relations, do you have any regrets as you prepare to leave office 
maybe you could have been tougher against the US administration on this. And if you can, just a few words briefly on, uh, in the context of trade efforts to save the Iran nuclear deal, we know that President Trump wants to stop all trade between the EU and Iran. What's the latest in terms of efforts to try and push back against this from the EU side? It would be tempting to sing non, je regrette rien, but um, I, I don't know. It's too, it's too, too still in the in the in the midst of of negotiating and talking and uh, reaching out to the U.S. to have a full overview of what could we have done differently. Uh, I think the EU has, and the minister emphasised that as well, and all ministers, I think, today say that the, e the US is a partner, is a friend. We regret that there are tensions there and there are some profound disagreements, but fundamentally we do have some joint interests. And from our point of view, uh, while defending our interests, of course, we are always willing to talk and to try to find uh, a way forward uh, in, in, in these issues. And this is the continued approach uh, that we will have. Could we have done some things differently? Maybe. You'll read about that in my memoirs. They will come just before Christmas. Uh, and... Um, but we, and, and we will, the remaining 10 days that I'm here, and I'm convinced that the next commission as well will continue to push for the, uh, with the, the US to see if we can agree on, on some of the issues. Um, when, when you discuss, there's always two partners in this uh, as well. And, and we, of course, I think many of us are sad that the, the transatlantic link does not seem as important for the current US administration as it used to be. On Iran, we did not discuss this at all today. It might have been on, uh, uh, discussed in, in the NATO and in the FIC uh, talks earlier this week. I, I'm not aware of the latest. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure that someone from the, the, the um, press services here can, can, can inform you about that, if anything has changed. Jim, please. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Jim Brunston from the Financial Times. Uh, I've got two questions, if I may. One, uh, one more specific and one a bit broader, for, and the second one for Commissioner Malmström. Um, firstly, how much, uh, given this situation with the appellate body, uh, how much scope is there to develop this alternative system that we're, we're already developed, that the EU is already developing with Canada and Norway? Uh, uh, to, 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 sorry, to what point does the EU really want to develop that system? A, at a certain point, doesn't it start to look like something which is actually more of a rival to the WTO than than anything else? This this, this um, sort of uh, ad hoc interim dispute settlement system. You know, how, how far down that road does the EU? really want to go. And secondly, more broadly, for Commissioner Malmström, as, it, as it's your last press conference at the Council, uh, honestly, what, what scope do you see to save the WTO as an institution? Or what's your honest opinion on, on the future prospects of, of, of the WTO system, given the competing pressures from, from the US, China and others? Thank you very much. Who would like to start? Minister or Malmström? Well, thank you for your question. I think today, as before, I think the most important thing is that Europe is united. We have a common voice and we have a common interest in developing multilateral trading system, including WTO. And it's obvious that WTO is in crisis and we have to find solutions. We have to be able to reform and renew our ways of doing things. And I, I think actually today we had a very good and good spirit discussion as far as WTO and our way towards the MC12 and, and the commitment, I think, amongst the member states is that, that we will find solutions. We will really want to go further. And I will leave the details to Mrs. Malmström, but actually I'm very proud that we have a united Europe which has common voice and we are ready to reform and renew the WTO because we need the multilateral system. We need the multilateral world. That, that is absolutely true, and, and the EU is very united on this, and we have very strong support from the European Parliament uh, as well. On the, the interim solution, we'd rather not do it at all, of course, because we, we would have liked not to, to need it. So what we, we're doing now with Norway and Canada, and we are in talks with other countries as well, is to see if, on an ad hoc basis, hopefully very short, we could copy the system. It's not a rivalry system. It's exactly the same system, but bilaterally, building on the competences of the secretariat of the WTO and the pool of judges or arbitrators that they have. So 
identical system in order to give some clarity and reassurances to our companies uh, in, in that. Ideally, we would, would, would like to have uh, this as a plurilateral agreement with at least a critical mass, and this is also something that was discussed in Shanghai two weeks ago when there was a mini-ministerial. Uh, so we will continue that, but in the same time, of course, supporting the so-called Walker process in Geneva, where we're trying to see if we can somehow convince the US to unblock their, their blocking of, of arbitrators. And next year, if there is no solution, continue to work with the US. We have put forward reforms proposal with many other countries as well to see if we can restore the, the, the appellate body uh, system with some reforms, and that we recognize uh, as well. Because the WTO is in serious need of reform. I, I don't think it is about to collapse, but if, it is, if nothing happens the coming years, it will be more and more weakened and it will become irrelevant. And that is both the appellate body is just one part of it. It is the working methods. We need to be much more transparent. We need to notify. We need to make sure that members do what they promise to do. We need to find a solution to the issue of development and uh, special and differential treatment. We need to make sure the uh, WTO can make decisions in this transition time, moving more towards plurilaterals. And here there are some positive moves in the e-commerce, in the investment facilitation, in the uh, service, domestic service regulation, where we are moving. We are 70, 80 countries uh, in there as well. And we need to make sure that, that we, we uh, uh, you know, the whole organization deals uh, with, with relevant issues. And that's the work we do, for instance, with US and, and Japan. Uh, updating the rule book on subsidies, uh, industrial subsidies, on, on forced technology transfer, and so on. So all of this has to be done uh, in order to, to strengthen the WTO. It will not be, you know, at this moment we have a package and we solved it all. It will have to be uh, uh, pieces uh, and bits, but there needs to be a, a, a thorough and quite radical reform if that organization is going to, to, to remain its... Uh, important for, for the world. We have 164 members, and it's important for us in the EU, as the minister said, but it's also very important for the developing world, that there are rules that everybody uh, accepts. Uh, and that's why we, need, we will need to, to reinforce our, our engagement with lots of countries all over the world to, to you know, get them on board to our reform agenda. Or listen to other proposals, but a reform agenda. Gentleman here in the middle. Thank you very much. Emre Picker with the Wall Street Journal. Um, I have a question on cars and a question on the WTO. On the car tariffs, you mentioned that uh, you're, you're happy that there was no decision on it last week, but the threat uh, is still there. Uh, legally, it seems the threat is gone. What makes you think uh, or what makes you concerned that this threat might resurface? And on the WTO, would you support a solution whereby the two appellate body members uh, whose terms are ending on December 10 uh, could stay on uh, for another uh, an extended period or a short term uh, as, you know, the EU and other partners try to hammer out something with Ambassador Walker and the U.S.? And are you concerned that uh, the U.S. is now also threatening to withhold the, the WTO's budget um, partially because they don't want to pay for what they see as an added expense uh, for the interim measure you're proposing under Article 25. Um, and if they hold up the budget, would like is there a stopgap measure that the EU and other willing partners could do to keep WT operations going once the money runs out? Thank you. There are so many questions here, let's <laughs> say if, if I remember them all. Uh, if there is an agreement with, with other countries that these two remaining uh, appellate body members would stay a little bit longer in order to give us more time, if we think that that could be useful to reach a, a solution, yes, we would, we would support that. On the car tariffs, uh, well, we haven't, we haven't received a formal um, announcement that they will not take place. That's why I'm still a little bit cautious, but, but uh, we consider this as that the deadline has passed and uh, there are severe legal limitations for the president to take further action. And uh, we also interpret it politically as th the president respecting uh, the agreement that we did with, with, the, with President uh, Juncker and also noting that there has been very little public demand 
in the US for these tariffs, if you look at the hearings and the, the congressional uh, investigations and, and so on. Uh, so on this, uh, I'm, I'm quite optimistic. Uh, on the budget, uh, I think we still need to know a little bit more about this. It's just, you know, rumors uh, around this, a, um, an interim solution between Sweden and Nor uh, between Norway and, and uh, the EU. Probably we could find a solution outside the, the WTO budget if that was to be the case. Uh, Philip Blengensop of Reuters. Uh, Minister, you said that one of the keys to um, the EU-US uh, relationship, particularly obviously in regard to trade, but I guess also in, in relation to the WTO issue, was to reduce tensions. And I just wondered, you know, in what way can the EU reduce tensions anymore? Is it, or is it really mu very much more on the American side? Uh, and I also just wanted to ask, uh, you've obviously looked ahead to the meeting uh, next summer in Kazakhstan, what what real I mean for both of you, what, what realistically could one expect uh, in terms of a result or achievement at that meeting? Well, as said, as far as WTO, yes, it's obvious that we have uh, we have a situation that we are in a kind of crisis, and obviously, we need we need concrete results. It's an urgent situation, and that's what I meant with what I said earlier and having the road and paving the way towards the uh, Nur Sultan for June. And also what I said earlier regarding the EU-US relation, yes, we are to, to maintain and we are determined to have the positive uh, trade agenda. And that's what we do and that's why we want to keep the good dialogue. And obviously we see also some positive signals that we can also get further in certain elements. And that's important, and that's what we are trying to pursue, and that's what we do. As Commissioner, something to add? Uh, yes, but just briefly on the, the um, uh, Nur Sultan meeting in, in June, obviously this will you know, intensify dialogue with other countries to see what is feasible. But I think we need to be realistic and modest, but still ambitious. We could hopefully achieve an agreement on the uh, a multilateral agreement on fisheries the december deadline will not be met but uh, if we accelerate we could uh, we could do that w on the plurilaterals um, e-commerce is a little bit too early to conclude in june i think but at least an announcement and a stock taking uh, is important the domestic regulation in services could possibly be concluded at that time and also either stock taking or concluding a little bit too early to say on the investment facilitation uh, agreement. And then the most important thing is to get a forward-looking ministerial declaration which lays out some of the big challenges in sustainability and uh, in, in, um, in, in preserving the multilateral system, but also more concrete the, the way uh, of, of reform and setting some kind of roadmap or working program. That would be ideal. Is that realistic? Well, I was in Kenya. There we got uh, um, a ministerial declaration, even if just in uh, Buenos Aires we failed. Um, but at least that would be, be uh, the, the EU strategy to try to get one. Next question, please. Oh, uh, David, David Thomas from Market News. Um, I was just wondering if, if, you'd, if you'd say the Mercosur deal is definitely dead at this point, and if it is, what, what implications does that have for Australia and New Zealand, both, both of which, both deals were, seem to involve quite a bit of the same difficulties that Mercosur had? Been kicking. Uh, we concluded this politically. We are now um, confirming the very last technical uh, details of that, and also the, the translation and legal scrabbling is, is, is on its way. Um, I think maybe end of, end of next year it could be ready to put forward to ministers uh, for, for further treatment, but it's very much alive, I would say, and it's, it's a great accomplishment. Those negotiations are also ongoing. We just had end of October, if I'm correct, uh, uh, around with Australia. And uh, there has been uh, contacts on a ministerial level with New Zealand as well. There's no date for the next meeting yet. I have to leave that for my, my successor to, to decide. Uh, but, but negotiations are ongoing and there's close contacts uh, and there's progress. So, so uh, they, they are definitely not dead. Hello, Jana Dreyer from Borderlex. Um, 
I have a question on China. Um, uh, Minister Skinari, what, um, what were the common themes that emerged at the, at the lunch discussion? What, what are the top three areas that member states fret about on the re trade relationship with China? Um, Mrs. Malmström, what is your honest assessment <laughs> to on the state of play in, in, the, in the relationship? There was the summit last year where there was this uh, joint declaration and really clear steps and commitments on both sides, uh, namely the investment agreement next year. Is, is it realistic that it can be achieved? The government procurement uh, agreement accession where China recently tabled a new offer, is this, what's your assessment, is it a positive step? And China's attitude towards the WTO reform process, especially on obviously subsidies and uh, <laughs> developing country status. Thank you. Well, as, as far as China, as, as far as our informal lunch discussion, you asked what were the two or three main, main topics of discussion. Well, I could give you one, which is the most important, that's how to level the playing field, how to do it in a, in a long run, and what kind of activities, commitments, and dialogues are needed in a short run. And I think we have a full commitment as far as EU, as far as the minister, to keep up the good dialogue and get further. And as said, we discussed about the trade and investment relations and how to improve our relations. But Mrs. Malmström can continue with the details. I think with China, who is an, an important but complicated partner, obviously, uh, what we need to see from China right now is increased engagement and also walk the talk. Uh, because we are meeting in our, our negotiation, we are making progress, but uh, we will exchange a second round of offers next uh, month. So we need to see the level of ambition. We have said to China that the first round, fine, but, but it wasn't enough. We, we expect a higher level of ambition. So we are expecting that, and, and after that, we'll make a, a judgment. Uh, China joining GPA is very positive, but of course, we need to see the offers there as well. Uh, seems to be a quite limited offer so far, but that needs further analysis. And on WTO reform, it is clear that China has benefited enormously from WTO and the, the multilateral system. And I think they, they want to work with us to reform it, but they need to take a stronger leadership, a stronger role there, and also realize that some of the reforms that are needed in the WTO also affect China. So they need to start reforming issues such as uh, big uh, state subsidies, for instance, um, and, and that that also said in, in the, um, the summit we had in, in April earlier this year. So we would encourage China to you know, le le increase their level of ambition in all these areas. Uh, hello, Joanna Sapinska, MLEX. Um, uh, Commissioner, could you please say a little bit more about uh, what support the, today the member states, uh, states have shown uh, to this um, uh, idea floated by by the Dutch uh, minister mm. to um, on the uh, on the how is it called responsible business mm -hmm. conduct yes. and the second question um, yeah that's all thank you. Well, we did not have a very long discussion of this because it was a, an, any other business point, but the Dutch minister presented these ideas and the minister who spoke thought that it was definitely something to, worth exploring. EU has been doing some of the things there. This goes beyond trade uh, to, to many other areas. We have been working with the OECD on responsible business uh, as well, and we have, have done a few things. There is a report coming out at beginning of next year, I think, on, on due diligence and see what can, more can be done. I think there's definitely more more to be done, both in member states uh, and possibly on EU level uh, as well. So there was a general positive reception of her proposals, but uh, members were not really prepared for, for the details. So this is probably something where discussions will continue uh, next year. So we have time for two, two more questions. Please, one gentleman there. Um, <coughs> Merci. Philippe Renier, Journal Le Soir, en français, si, si possible. Uh, Madame Almström, vous avez dit que le, la, ma question portait également sur le Mercosur, mais peut-être pour aller plus loin, uh, que l'accord était absolument pas mort. Mais est-ce que, uh, dans le cadre donc, du travail qui est en cours, est-ce qu'il y a uh, des perspectives de uh, modifier certains contours de ce qui a été uh, mis sur la table et qui a fait l'objet de l'accord politique, notamment en termes d'environnement, d'agriculture, de déforestation, enfin, tous les sujets 
sujets qui ont fait polémique ces derniers temps Ou bien est-ce que euh, cet accord poursuit sa, sa vie, je dirais, euh, exactement comme il a été euh, dealé précédemment Merci. Oui, écoutez, l'accord est, est clos. Donc, on ne va pas l'ouvrir et renégocier. C'est un accord qui a été fini et a été annoncé et, et bientôt sera publié dans toutes les langues euh, aussi. Euh, les sujets que vous évoquez, où il y a eu une certaine discussion cet été, euh, notamment euh, concernant le Brésil, dans l'accord, comme vous avez vu et que vous allez voir aussi, c'est très clair que le Brésil a fait des, des engagements vis-à-vis -vis l'accord de Paris qui sont répétés d'une manière contraignante dans notre accord. Et nous attendons que le Brésil respecte les, les engagements. Et je pense que ce sera absolument nécessaire. Euh, et il faudra voir où, où on en est le jour où l'accord est, est prêt à, à, à ratifier ou à discuter sur la table des ministres et, des, et puis euh, le Parlement européen, évidemment. Et nous sommes en contact politique avec tous les gouvernements de, 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 des pays de Mercosur. Et moi-même et autres collègues ont dit très clairement aux Brésiliens que si, si ce n'est pas respecté, il y aura des difficultés à ratifier l'accord. Alors, la dernière question, s'il vous plaît. Euh, Odile Harvey pour le Radio Nord-Bretagne. Deux questions. Euh, D'abord sur la Chine. Euh, Est-ce que vous avez discuté des conséquences euh, à court terme ou à plus long terme des troubles à, euh, euh, qui se passent à Hong Kong actuellement et sur les relations euh, commerciales entre l'Union européenne et la Chine, d'une part Et deuxième question, hier, au Parlement européen, se tenait une euh, conférence de très haut niveau pour... Euh, euh, commémorer la, 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 les 30e anniversaire des droits des enfants. Et euh, je voulais savoir si euh, vous avez évoqué éventuellement, on sait que dans certains pays, euh, il y a des, les, des, des enfants qui sont au travail, et, etc. Bon. Merci. Euh, non, sur les deux, deux questions. C'est deux questions très importantes. Évidemment, je suis sûre que Hong Kong a été discuté avec les ministres d'affaires étrangères. Mais nous, nous, on n'a pas évoqué la question. Et sur la conférence hier et sur la journée des droits des enfants, je crois que beaucoup de nous, individuellement, on a donné une certaine visibilité, mais ce n'a pas été discuté aujourd'hui. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you. Merci beaucoup.